So here is this promised random Bible, but this is Channel Chat, a new segment that uh, I came up with this morning while in the shower and thinking about a specific YouTube experiment. So I'm Chad Brooks, I'm a pastor here in Louisiana. I make videos about the Bible, the spiritual life, and the everyday going ons of a pastor. So I started an experiment around a month ago, and I do a lot of things. I'm a content developer and a coach for a company called Passion and Partnership. I've got a podcast with a pretty decent sized podcast community that's around it. I also pastor two small rural churches part time, and I make YouTube videos. And I put every single thing on a content content calendar because I've got a lot of stuff that goes out every week. I've got an email every Monday morning full of seven of my favorite links from around the internet from that week. If you're not signed up for that yet, you can grab that down there in the show notes. Bible stuff, uh, general theology, pop culture, social theory, music, and YouTube links in there, but I digress. One of the things I did was I created a content calendar to manage all of the pieces of stuff I had going out to the internet every week, which was my Monday morning roundup email. I do a productive pastor email for the folks that are part of that podcast community. I have a podcast episode that comes out every week. I preach every single Sunday, and I wanted to start getting more regular with my YouTube content. Oh, and I also write online. So that was a lot of content. And what I decided to do was to develop it out to where I had a specific calendar where everything was happening. And I also also had the space and margin to create things in a way that was healthy and just kind of kept up with stuff. So I decided to start scheduling my YouTube videos for Saturday morning. And one of the things I learned, and a couple of things, I don't know if it was necessarily the content. I did a couple of episodes, a couple of YouTube videos on reading and not so much on Bible content, but I was really blown away with how those YouTube videos underperformed compared to other stuff. Now, I thought it could have been a couple of things. Number one, if you're part of the Bible YouTube community, you know that Jason Mayfield, uh, who influenced so many of us and is an awesome, great guy, been super encouraging to this channel, um, how he took a lot of things down. And one of the things he was frustrated with was how YouTube, YouTube seemed to prioritize Bible-focused content. Now, I'm not sure if that's what's going on, but it is one of my theories. Another one of my things I do know from my analytics is that, you know, Saturday morning is a time when folks are on YouTube, but when I was releasing stuff on weekday afternoons and getting better traction, that's actually a time when more of you are on YouTube. And so in fact, what this is, is an experiment to see uh, what kind of 24 hour hits do I get when I mention Bibles? And when I release on an afternoon, when YouTube tells me that more of my followers and my subscribers are online than not. Now, because here's the thing, this is why I'm doing this. I am 300 watch hours away from the 4,000 watch hours that you need to get monetized. Now, I'm not trying to make money off of YouTube because let's be honest, a Bible YouTuber is not going to make money off of YouTube, but it's a milestone. It's something to kind of shoot for. For a person who really does content development almost full time, it's just a fun little bit of celebration to show that you've you've hung in there. And I've been on YouTube for over 10 years and really just started focusing on it in the last 18 months. It's just, it's just a, a slap on the back that you can give yourself. So I'm focused on hitting that standard not so because I'm gonna make like what probably five dollars a month off the channel but just to get there and I also realized like I'm all, just kind of bothered what when all of a sudden hit started going down in those first 24 hours that's the channel chat portion of this second thing is I do have this really interesting Bible that I pulled off of the Bible stack book. I would actually like to do a thing one day to where people could select a random Bible off the Bible shelf and I would have to like tell a story about the Bible and talk about the Bible. But I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But this is this. This is the people's Bible. I've had this for probably 10 years. It's an NIV. It comes out of Zondervan. And I'll show it on the overhead cam, but what's really interesting is when this was published, it was a joint effort with the folks at Bible Gateway. And what they did was they set up the fonts and the weighting of the font, which is the size of the font as well as the boldness factor. The, the more often that verse was searched for in the Bible or on Bible Gateway, the, the larger that the, uh, 
the font it would be. And so it's really interesting to just walk through uh, the people's Bible and just see how often folks are or are not uh, searching for this verse. And so I find this Bible actually pretty helpful because it helps me understand just cultural religiosity and that sort of a thing. And so I hope you're enjoying just the screenshots as I flip through this Bible and share this, but I said, this is an experiment. Or if you just really didn't like the reading content that I did a couple of videos, just tell me in the comments because you know, I do this not just for me, I do this to build community around a certain thing, and it's always about experimenting. I always like to experiment. So, I'm Chad, I will be back in my next video. I'm working on a video about what does it mean to read the Bible versus what does it mean to study the Bible, and that should be out maybe Saturday, or maybe I just get fed up with this experiment and post it on a Thursday afternoon. I don't know, but I will see you back in the next video. Until then, let's hang out in the comments.